And welcome back to a Standard Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jono, and back with us, like I said this week, is my co-host, the one and only Chris. The one and only. It feels so good to have you back. I know. It it feels good to be back. And then for those of you listening, please excuse uh, Jono's uh, audio in the background. You might hear some screaming. What that is, is not, it's not his children. What is it? It is, is his inner child screaming at himself and asking why why am i two and five why it's actually my child it's bedtime and if anybody who has a child knows about bedtime it's like a wwe session so but you're right i am questioning why i'm two and five and i should be if i look back at it realistically i should be three and four i had one one quarterback mistake after week one like i i started justin fields instead of kirk cousins Week two, and when week one, I, I went with Fields. He dudded. Cousins blew up. I could have won that week two, but that wasn't the decision. If, I'm, if I don't, if I don't, if I recall correctly, week three, you started Fields over over Kirk and Fields dudded. Or Fields, oh no, you started. No, Kirk no, over Kirk Fields. over Fields and Fields had his 40 point game or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. No, yeah, On no, I know. I know. I know, but that's still wouldn't have won me the week. I think I got, I think I got blew out that week. Yeah, it's been a tough one for a lot of people out there. So if you're sitting there with your head in your hands a little bit, it there's still a lot of football left. Yeah, and let me let me just say this, and I'm I'm giving uh, I'm razzing Jono a little bit, but the last two years, my back to back championship years, um, I've started the season very similarly. So um, there's still time. There's still hope for you guys because all you need to do is make it to the playoffs. Yep. When you make it to the playoffs, anything can happen. Most of the time, the top dogs go down in the playoffs early, early on, and it's those bottom feeders, it's those five, six-seeded guys that make a run at it. Yeah. Well, today's episode, before we jump into it, uh, is going to be our Thursday night football preview. Uh, the Buccaneers-Bills this week, the Bees, the Battle of the Bees. Uh, so before we jump in, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so you get all the shorts that we're going to be posting the rest of this week as well as our full weekend slate preview that's going to be brought to you by Chris because I will be heading out of town for a wedding. So That's true. It will, it will. But uh, let's jump into it. Let's start off with the Buffalo Bills here. Um, this is pretty quick and easy. You're starting Josh Allen. Uh, I know he's been dealing with a little bit of a shoulder. It doesn't seem like he's been pushing the f- ball downfield that much, but he's had some great throws. He's had some off throws. He's still getting you 29, 30 points on a bad day and a rough game in six-point touchdown you know, you know what's been really rough for him this year is his lack of the rushing totals. But just like Kirk Cousins or just like any of these top the, – the, the receiver or the quarterbacks that have top-tier receivers – is as long as Stephon Diggs is on the field, yep. you're going to start Josh Allen. Yeah, Because it's the true. things that Stephon Diggs can do, Josh Allen doesn't need to do much. Just get him the ball. Well, I, I would, you know, I guess against your argument is Justin Jefferson's been not on the field and Jordan Addison did show up, but yeah, it's, that's all you need. Guys. You need he somebody. TJ Hawkinson, there's other weapons there too. He has but. the most drop balls. I'm going to talk about Kirk Cousins, but he has the most drop balls in the NFL right now, believe it or not. Anyway, uh, you're starting James Cook because this guy, rather, relative to the matchup, the Buccaneers are tough against the run, but he is great out the backfield with the pass. He showed it last week. He showed it throughout the season. I trust him. That's why we have Latavius Murray as a sit because they still are using James Cook in the red zone at times. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean because they're on the goal line. It's going to be Latavius Murray. The odds are higher, but it will also be Josh Allen as we saw last week too. So... Start James Cook, start Josh Allen, sit Lat Murray, start Diggs. Like Chris says, as long as he's on the field, you're starting Allen, and as long as Allen's playing, you're starting Stephon Diggs. Uh, sit Gabe Davis. We saw what could happen to what you would consider a wide receiver three boomer bust situation. You got the bust last week, and it's two weeks in a row now on it. I don't like it on Thursday night football on top of that. So moving on, Dalton Kincaid, the lone soldier there as the tight end position. He is healthy off the concussion. Dawson Knox had the wrist surgery. He was not put on IR. Uh, Who knows, regardless of how long he's going to be out, this is Dalton's chance to be tight end one uh, for this team, as well as the backup tight end to the two of these guys is also been on injury this week. So really, he's the only pass-catching tight end now there. So up those targets. 
Yeah, and you got to like the production. And I'm, we've been saying this all season long and since the preseason is that Stephon Diggs is, or the, the Buffalo Bills have been desperate for a number two pass catcher. And this is really a good opportunity for for Kincaid to step in and become that guy. They, they become the guy that they thought he was going to be when they drafted him. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting here, and, and really the biggest thing that's been in his way is the fact that he's splitting snaps with Dawson Knox. That's not yeah. happening anymore. And so, you know, we saw it last week when Knox went down, what kind of uh, impact Kincaid was making with, what, five uh, five receptions on six targets and or seven receptions on eight targets. Like, he's getting the volume there now because he doesn't have to split the, the, the snap shares. And especially look look for down the red zone. Like, this is going to be a Kincaid touchdown week um, where, where he's going to be uh, open in the red zone and they're going to get him the ball. You know, Diggs has been the big play downfield guy. Same with Gabe Davis. Um, but Knox they've used in the red zone and along with the rushing attack. But I just feel Kincaid now has his, his opportunity to really take the next step into that elite tight end uh, or tight end one, but not elite tight end, but tight end one position. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you can call it tight end too, because outside of two or maybe three guys, this year is tough to say three, but two guys for sure with Andrews and Kels, those are your true tight end ones. Everybody else has been sitting in tight end two when you talk about a bunch of these guys in the groups. And it's been a deep, deep group of guys that are getting 40 to 50 yards per game at the tight end position, and then it depends on who gets a touchdown, who finishes higher that week. That's a tough. That that's a good thing for streamer tight end uh, fantasy owners out there, but it's a bad thing too because you got to try and hit on it. And I'm with Chris. This this is going to be a situation where Dalton Kincaid separates himself from that smaller group that's getting 40 to 50 yards a game, and he may be getting 60 to 80 yards a game with the touchdown capital being in red zone opportunities. So I, I agree with Chris here. This is, this is a chance to separate here. Just like Sam Laporta has been separating for a little bit there, and Luke Musgrave has been given, like these rookie tight ends we talked about, Chris and I said in the preseason, there's a chance three rookie tight ends finish in the top 10. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the Bills' defense. They are beat up. It is a tough one to, to like, especially after what you saw against the Patriots last week. Um, one thing I will say is they... Um, have been weak against the backfield, uh, the pass catchers out the backfield. Um, So something to watch out there. And just because they're playing Baker Mayfield and just because it's him and it's a Thursday night football game doesn't mean they're not going to give up points. Um, The fact that you have no Matt Milano hurts the, the running defense there. And if Rashad White can get ahead of steam going, that's great. But also, you look, Tredavious White's out. That hurts them in the secondary. So... Temper your expectations with the Buffalo Bills. If you have an opportunity to pick somebody up with a better matchup, stream them this week is what I would say. Yeah, I mean, we saw the Patriots, who we all thought going into last week was a just a terrible, terrible offense. Um, we saw what they did to them last week. And 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 I think it's more of a, there's like you said, uh, it's just more of the, there's injuries all along to key positions on that team. D and linemen as well have been out. I can't D, remember yeah. who hey, exactly Milano, they've been Milano out. Milano alone is such a big loss because he's the centerpiece of that defense, and yeah. everything revolves around him. And so losing him is is a it puts more pressure onto Von Miller. It puts more pressure onto the other guys at the linebacker position. And then you look at the back the the defensive back position and Tre'Davious White being out. Um, you know they, they've they've dealt with injuries a lot this season on the defensive side. And, you know, that's that's kind of been really the what stood out the last two weeks. And, you know, you look at their losses and they have been they haven't been good losses. Um, no, it's, it's I mean, with the defense not being the big stoppers that they normally are, it's putting pressure on this offense to try and score points. And it, you don't you're not used to seeing that in this Bills uh, situation, especially last year and this year, where they're getting ahead of teams early and let their defense do the work and let them coast out these victories. They're not coasting anything out these past couple of weeks. And no. I don't see it happening. Like, this is a situation, this is another trap game for Buffalo with a solid ten- the Tampa Bay defense that takes the ball away and creates uh, turnovers. And an offense that's not that bad for Tampa Bay behind right. Baker Mayfield. He's getting the job done. Right. So and I was going to say that too. Is, is that like this? This is not a bad team. Um, these they're an under the radar team, and and like you said, this is this is another matchup where on paper you look at them, the Bills are going to handle the, the Buccaneers, and I don't I don't see it going that way. I still think the Bills come out with a win, 
Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be this 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 blowout of a game. I think the the Bucks are going to be in it, and the Bucks might have a chance to win this game. Well, especially in a situation where the the Buccaneers division it's up for grabs, and they're looking like one of the better teams offensively in that division. The the New Orleans Saints don't look that great. The Atlanta Falcons find ways to lose and slash win ball games. Like to me, they're going to be fighting tooth and nail, and to get a win against Buffalo. Yeah, to get a win against Buffalo here, it would be huge coming off that loss to Atlanta last week. So, um, speaking of, let's talk about these Buccaneers here. Um, we have Our, Baker Mayfield and Rashad White both as sleeper picks here. And when we say sleeper picks, we're mostly talking about Rashad White. Is got a fle- He's been more flex appeal in terms of his running uh Output. However, we have an, he has an opportunity to put up some good RB two numbers this week, especially out the backfield. And same thing with Baker Mayfield. You could probably make an argument with no bye weeks, you know, no teams on bye this week. You could say there's definitely twelve other quarterbacks I like better than Baker Mayfield. Yeah. However, there may not be twelve better situations. Like Baker's not in on the downside of being a tough matchup, and he's not on the top side of being this is an amazing matchup. You got you got to look at people like Chicago who have a good matchup. However, it's a rookie quarterback. You got to look at you know Tennessee Titans starting a combination of Malik Willis, uh, and so to me, I I put him in the sleeper category because he has opportunity to actually perform, and he's been solid enough at times. So I don't There's know if you one want to. Mike Evans is on that the the other side of the foot. No, he's catching balls from him, and if if we think that Mike Evans is going to have have a good game then we think baker mayfield could have a good game and and here's kind of here's where i see a lot of our sleeper picks this year have been their sits but optimistic sits yeah their top end sit guys is is who our sleepers are they're not these guys where you're like you know you're taking a shot in the dark with um they're guys that have good matchups against teams that are weak at that position um and and they have an opportunity but there might be 12 other guys that we like over them which is the case this week with Baker Mayfield. I think he has an, a, a chance to be in that top 12 category, to be a quarterback one for the week. Um, but he's also not before the week starts in that category for me yet. Well, he's, so, he's probably not on your team as your starting quarterback. That's what we're saying. Right. Pretty much. Right. Like, obviously, it was kind of an anomaly for Kirk Cousins on Monday night to have the game he had. But that was a situation playing against Kirk, the- baby. Yeah, against the 49ers, like if you had Baker as a back as a backup, go you know, going to the week, like that's a situation where like, hmm, maybe I play Baker because I just don't like Kirk prime time on Monday night. Now it worked out in your favor if you had that situation, you played Kirk. But that's what we mean by that sleeper there. Rashad White, sleeper wise, that this is more of a cautionary start to us in terms of this, because we're saying he is worthy of a flex play here, uh, because of volume alone. But also let me put out a couple stats here of why I like Rashad White this week, and he'll be more than just a flex start. And it's because Buffalo has given up four to six receptions to the running back position per game this season. And on top of that, three out of the four last games that they've had, they've given up at least 48 receiving yards to the running back. Upwards of 75 receiving yards to the running back. We saw at the end of the game there uh, for Ramondre Stevenson, Saquon Barkley was the only anomaly and that was when he uh, he had five catches for four yards or four for five yards, something small like that, um, which was off to me. And I, it's probably the Giants play calling, to be honest. But everybody else, the Dolphins, the Patriots, everybody they've played, they've given up plenty to. And so I think this is a, an opportunity for Rashad White to, to pull off another receiving gem that, to build off of last week. I think he had 66 yards through the air last week. The other Yeah, and the other reason that he's a cautionary – you know, start for us is that with uh, Chase Edmonds coming back, um, you know, this is an opportunity for uh, they've needed production from the running back position. And Chase Edmonds uh, might be uh, a guy that takes a lot of the carries away um, and and could get some production there taken away from um, Rashad White, who has been struggling as a running back this year. Yeah. 
Um, we're not playing any of the backup running backs. We have Sean Tucker listed up here. Um, nope. We're going to switch him out to Chase Edmonds in the future because I think Chase Edmonds is going to have this number two role now that he's back. Uh, but I'm not quite yet willing to put him up there for this game. Even if he's active, they're going to probably have him on a little bit of a pitch count. And they're going to want to see what Rashad White and give him probably one last big shot at this. Chris Godwin is a sit for us. And again, it's not that we don't think Baker Mayfield's going to do bad, so Chris Godwin's going to do bad. Godwin hasn't been doing great this season, period. It's been Mike Evans' show there, and then Godwin has had little spurts here and there. We were expecting him to be the touchdown machine he was of the past, and that's not the case. Um, so sitting him, K. Dotton is an interesting one here, but Buffalo has actually fared decently enough against the tight end that I don't like it here. There's there's 12 other tight ends I'd rather start over Kate Otten. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, probably, there's probably I, I could name 15. So in that case, even if somebody's carrying two tight ends, you could probably grab the 15th one over Otten. So, and then the Buccaneers defense, as as good of a takeaway machine as they've been as of late, uh, and and the fact that the Bills have chances and take risks that can turn the ball over with Josh Allen. I just don't know if I like playing them against Buffalo coming off of two losses. It could this be is one, Yeah, this is one of those games where, like, analytics, it's like, say, start them. Uh, I just have – I mean, me and you both, we just have that feeling that it's like, you know, the, the, the Bills are not going to lose three in a row. Um, the Bills are going to try to take command of that that division. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're, they've, they're, they're one, game, one game back from the Jets. Yep. Yep. And uh, or one game ahead of the Jets. The Jets, one game ahead of the Jets. One, I think they're one game back of the Dolphins or tied with the Dolphins. So it's I one think, game back. yeah. So I think to me, this is a get right game. If if Buffalo loses this game, there's going to be some talks about, you know, they need to make some wholesale changes. And there's, you'll, there's you'll be see, some problems if they lose three in a row right now. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some trades happen at the trade deadline, not away from Buffalo, but defensively no. for Buffalo. Well, it, it, listen. If they lose three in a row, I don't think there's going to be trades happening there. I think they're 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 going to start play calling to where James Cook might be a league winner. Yeah, or and and I guarantee you, you'll start to see um, Josh Allen just start running the ball back like he used to. I mean, because if it's not working with him doing it not that way, uh, the problem is I don't think it's the offense. I think it's the defense, and they have to find ways to stop people. Well, yeah, the offense has just turned the ball over. So, like I said, you know, going back to the Bucks defense, like I, I like the defense. They've been they've been great at turning the ball over against a team that t- likes to turn the ball over. Um, but it's just one of those matchups where I just don't, I don't feel it. Like you know, it's it's a, it's a scary matchup where Buffalo has the the firepower to be a top three offense in this league, mm-hmm. and they just haven't been that. Um, and if they click, you know, you don't want to be on the and you hate to start a defense on the Thursday night. Like I just, I there's something that grosses, you, there's something you that grosses me out about it, and that just like I need to start a defense right now. It's going to be a Thursday night game, like especially the way Thursday night games this year have been going. Like they've been they've been kind of wild, like shootout games where the offenses have taken advantage of the defense. And so uh, we saw it last week um, with the uh, the Saints game um, against Jacksonville, where you had these just massive plays. Uh, we've seen it in pretty much every Thursday night game. So um, it's not a game that I want to start either defense in particularly. Uh, so uh, if I have the option, I- I'll start someone else. Yeah. Which and the, I do. The, yeah. Like going back to week one, 21, 20 lines over chiefs week two, 34, 28 Eagles over Vikings week three, you had 30 to 12 over the giants, the 49ers uh, week four, 34 20 like these games are taking the over almost every single week and yep. it wouldn't surprise me if this game does the same thing and you know yep. in fact you go as mo- most recent as this past one that was the only one that went under was the chiefs broncos game that heavily defensive game but we knew the chiefs were going to be good and the broncos offense was terrible we're not in a situation like that um so to me i kind of agree with chris it's just a perfect example of go get atlanta go get the seahawks go get one of these others defenses that have a good uh, match up here this week and stream them over the Buccaneers. But the Buccaneers long term, there's some good inner conference and inter interdivisional games that they can benefit being your starting defense. Oh for sure. All right. Well thanks. Texans. Yeah. Yeah, you go. Yeah. Get the Texans. That's a sneaky play too this week. I think a lot of people plus they've already had their bye. Yeah. And they get and they get to play the Titans 
again. So, <laughs> um, thanks for tuning in for our Thursday night football preview. Uh, as always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell so you get the notifications for all our video drops moving forward. And as always, leave your comments. We love to hear them. We love to hear your start, your start sits questions, your trade advice, anything of that, especially with the trade deadline coming up. Um, we'll try and touch on that this uh, this next couple episodes on our thoughts on certain players, uh, who to try and buy low, sell high opportunities before your league's trade deadlines are up. All right. Yes, sir. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, everybody.